Every woman's success should be an inspiration to another. We're strongest when we cheer each other on. And that's in the words of Serena Williams. It's on this note that I say good morning to you anywhere you're listening to us on OGBC 90.5 FM. It's another beautiful Saturday morning and I welcome you to this edition of Feminine Scope where we educate and motivate this generation through the lessons shared with us by our guests. My name is Toin Shogbeson. I'd like you to call me T.S. You're so free to do that. Today will not be different as I have another experienced woman in the house. She is ready to share her stories with us. My guest is Mrs. Olufumilola Adewunke Oyefeso, a retired civil servant, former director of publication at the Ogun State House of Assembly. It's nice to have you on this program. Thank you, ma. You're nice welcome. Nice to you. You're welcome, ma. Yes. So we'll start from the very beginning. What was growing up like for you as a girl child? I am Mrs. Olufumilola Adewunke Oyefeso. I was born on the 17th December 1960 by Mr. Edward Adeboye and Mrs. I was the fifth born of the family. I grew up with my cousins because I lost my father very early in life. So I grew up in the hand of a widow. She was a very caring woman. She lived an extraordinary life that every one of us emulate. I attended Odeoromo Anglican Christ Church School from 1967 even to 1971. I was admitted in 1972 December. I entered in 1973. I was admitted to Shark Bade Grammar School, Deremo, where I finished my secondary school in 1978. When I left Deremo in 1978, December, I went to Ibadan to stay with my brother, late Mr. Akin Ume Mutala. From there, I started working in Nepal. I worked with Nepal for three years, and I came to Ogun State. I was admitted to Staff Development Center, Kabaka Road, in 1981. That was June, June 15. Others have been in the class since no 18, but I heard of the uh, place late. I entered on June 15, 1981. So I saw my training. We were then being paid. Okay. It was not unlike now that they are paying government. Government was paying us then. My first year, I was paid level 5. Mm. And the second year, I was paid level 6. So I left in 1983. I started working with the government. I was paid to governor's office then. I was working with... Chief Ebene Salabatunde Oyede. He was the then special advisor to the governor on electrification and rural development. 1984, I was sent back to the school for my 120 60 words per minute. Hmm. So I went back in 1984 and I came out gloriously. I was later posted to Civil Service Commission to work with late Mr. Lateju. From there, I was posted to Lance. I worked with Chief Sokoya. So by 1989, I was sent to Federal Training Center, Lagos, for my 140, 70 words per minute. So I was there until 1990 when I finished. When I finished, I was posted to the State House of Assembly, where I started my career as a reporter. So I was there until I retired. In the middle of the whole thing, I think that was 1991, there was fellow Nigerians. Mm. I was posted to High Court of Justice. I worked with the then late Justice Odulami, Honorable Justice Odulami. Later, I worked with Honorable Justice Zelano. And then we were sent back to the House of Assembly. That was 92, when Shivoshoba came in as the governor of Ogun State. So I continued my career there until I retired in 2016 as Director of Publications of the State House of Assembly. Wow, what a chronology. I lo you see, I was just looking at you because your brain is so sharp. The way you were just willing everything, I said, no, don't let me interject. It's better for me to just calm down. Thank you for that brief and a very elaborate one, too. And um, while growing up, you grew up in Sharp Body. I grew up in Oderemo. Oderemo. Yes. Okay. What was growing up like in such a setup? How many were you from your parents? We were seven. Seven. Yes. Was it a polygamous house or for uh, seven from your mom alone? From my mom alone. Seven of you. Though my uh, it was a polygamous house. Okay. But certain things happened that we didn't have her brother or her sister. Oh. Yes. Okay. How many boys? How many girls? We have four boys, three girls. Uh, what number? Or you? I'm number five. Number five. Okay. Yes. Okay. So what happened that you didn't have 
uh, stepbrother, half brother, half sister. Yeah, my father married another woman. Okay. And she didn't give birth. Oh. So one day she accused my father that eh, all the children you have, your first wife has given birth to ah. <laughs> so My father said no. If that is what you are thinking, that same night my father met with my mother and another baby. Oh. Came. Came. That same night. So that the fault was not from him. Abi? Was that what he was trying to prove? That the fault was not from him. That okay. was what my father was proving. Okay. But unfortunately for my father, he didn't live to see the baby. Oh. He died in October 11, 1964. Hmm. The baby was born on December 21, 1964. Wow. So he didn't live to see the baby. Oh, his last birthday. Oh, that was the situation. Oh, yeah. So, what eventually happened to your stepmom? Did she get married? So she that left. Happened. She was a very nice lady. Hey. Even after the death of my father, she would still come and take care of us, talk to us. I felt she was just angry the day she talked to my father harshly. Mm. But she was a nice lady. Mm. Yes. I can imagine. So, growing up, you mentioned something like Nepa, that you worked in Nepa. Was yes. it Nepa then, or ECN, or what? It was Nepal. It was Nepal. I time. worked with Nepal for three years. Okay. Before I joined the Ogunse government, okay. I wanted to mark my service from Nepal with Ogunse government. But they refused me. Oh. They said I should start all over. All over. So I started all over in 1981. That was why I was able to spend 38 years in service because the three years was not much. Oh. So okay. I started all over. I spent 35 years in Ogunse. Less three days. Wow. Yes. 35 years. Yes. Full service. Yes. Oh. Great. So, why didn't you further your education by going to higher institution instead of the Taipei, this words per minute Taipei school or secretarial studies? I left secretarial work in 1988. I started my reporter's work in 1990. Okay. I was on training in between. Okay. When we say reporter in broadcasting, we mean those who are in the news division. For you at the State House of Assembly, what do you mean by a reporter? We are verbatim reporters. We report verbatim because we are going to write at the pace at which the speaker is talking. Mm. So you write at 140, 70 per minute. Mm. And I is not like when a mass communicator can just come and work in our department. No. The training school matters. That means further training center. Okay. We have it all over. We have it in Cardinal, we have it in Lagos, we have it everywhere in Nigeria. So you have to go through the training to know the etiquette of reporting in Ugusesa Assembly. It's unlike the other reporting. This is verbatim. You report everything verbatim, removing the tautologies and every unnecessary repetitions. Mm. Okay. Why don't you use a recorder? Record and then transcribe later. We record. Recording is just an assistance, thing, but you must write. You must, in case any, you must write in short time. In case anything happens to the tape, you must be able to transcribe your own uh, writings. Mm. You must be able to transcribe. You must not rely totally on. Even though they, we are recording on the floor of the house, there is a reference upstairs that they are recording to. But a lot of things can happen. People have done a lot of things in the past that is not worth mentioning. Okay. That they will tamper with the tape. Mm. So you, your own writing is what you are relying on. Your own transcript is what you are relying on. Not on the tape. Though the tape is there able to check. Maybe you two have removed some important words in your transcript or you are transcribing. The tape is there to check you. So when your editor is checking you, you will be listening to the tape, you will be checking the transcript, what you have written down. You will be checking it just to cross-check whether there is a miss up, whether you have removed something from it. Since you, you have reasons, one odd member will have spoken something on the floor and you call meet you behind this and say, that thing I said, I don't want it to appear at all. Mm. I will give you this amount. Mm. So to avoid that, you must check with the tape. Okay. So when such happens, because you know we're all human beings, and sometimes what you say in public, what you say on the floor or you say in public, you don't really want it to be recorded. What happens in such situations? Mm, we have a case of a reporter tampering with the tape, mm. and he refused to transcribe it even from his own take. Mm. The reference will show because your editor will have gotten in touch with the reference. If I Which one is the reference? Reference is the main recording room okay. that we have. It's okay. the main recording like room. Like a control room sort of? Yes. Okay. So your editor will have checked to know whether you have done something to your tape or not. When that thing happened, the person tampered with the tape and refused to transcribe it on his own 
the rifles exposed them because when it was checked with the rifles, it was shown that certain things are removed. Then the thing will not go concurrently. You will see that there is an omission. When somebody is talking and is talking fluently, and you get a state and you see that that thing is not it's distorted, mm -hmm. you will know that something has happened. Mm. Okay. Your stay, because you spent most of your working years, I'll say, in the House of Assembly. In High Court and House of Assembly. How many years did you spend in the High Court? 14 years. Oh, 14. In the House of Assembly, how many years? I spent the remaining... <laughs> so, w w that would be 21. Not 21. You said you spent 35 years. I was in government service. Okay. okay, okay. okay. I was in government service. Okay. I was in... Um, civil service commission oh, and lands. Okay, okay. But those are just big, big, big postings. Postings before you went back Finally, to the House of Assembly yes. too. So, in your years of the Ogo State House of Assembly, you two would have known how to make laws and how to present laws because you were the recorder. For experience, how does it come to bear on those members that are coming in freshly? Do you have any input at all? In terms of uh, when they come, teaching them or telling them, when they come in, yeah, the admin officers will train them. Okay. They will be trained for certain, and they will let them know the importance of every department. Mm -hmm. They will let them know that the editors, the reporters, they are your landlords. So mm -hmm. Whatever you do, they are the one recording you. Whatever you say, whatever you do, even without speaking, they are the one recording you. Mm -hmm. So most of that, they call us landlord, landlord. Mm -hmm. You don't have any number in the house of assembly because they say jokingly, this is assembly woman number. <laughs> so, so, so. I always hear that uh, out of 20, is it um, 26. 26 now? Yes. So they'll be giving themselves number. Yes. You are honorable number 28 number. <laughs> and then when we are mimicking them, yeah. when we have new reporters that we are mimicking them, we will sit down as honorable members. Hmm. We will be training the freshers okay. from the training school. Okay, you will now sit down as honorable as members. Honorable member. Why will so you now yes. take the report? Okay, the report. Yes. That's interesting. Uh, going back to your school days, you didn't come to Abiyokuta, to the city at all. You were all the while in that axis. Odiremo, did you say? Odiremo. Yes. Uh -huh. yes. You were there. You didn't miss anything in the city life. I didn't miss anything in the city life. Odiremo too is, is not a, a city. village. It's a town. It's a town. When you were growing when up, we were growing up, there was water, there was electricity. Ah, okay. It was when politics come in that they caught with their mom. <laughs> Tell me. <laughs> Tell me, there's a story behind the smile. There is a story behind it. Yes. So, after retirement, because you still look very young, not that young, but um, you're still very agile. Um, after retirement, what have you been doing with yourself? Mm -hmm. I retired before 60. Okay. Yes. That means you started work pretty early. Yes. You said you put in 38 I, years already. Uh, I started my work before 18. Oh. I started working with Nepal before 18. I left Nepal. I started, I started working with Obisegoma at 21. Great. Yes. Great. So I left when I was 56. Okay. That was eight years ago. Wow. I'm 64 this year. Oh, to the glory of God. To the glory of so God. So what do you do now? I'm working with judiciary presently. Okay. As I'm a contractor? Contract, contract staff. Yes. Oh. Okay. I'm working as member one. Member Customer one. record member one. Okay. I'm working in Shagamu. Okay. Is that a uh, political appointment? It's not a political appointment. Okay. It's just an appointment to the elders. Mm -hmm. Just to see how they can help the younger ones. The way people are leaving their marriages is alarming. Mm -hmm. You see a 24 years old girl going into the third marriage. So I was burdened. Mm -hmm. I said I would do something about it. That was how I entered the judiciary on contract basis. Mm -hmm. I spent three years there now. Is it paid? Is it paid employment? Okay, okay. Even though it's not satisfactory, ah. but no, you can't. for the passion, there's no salary to... that will satisfy anybody, anybody mm -hmm. at all. You know, it's a contract, something. So okay. it's not uh, with your uh, but but I'm happy. retirement. I'm money. happy doing it okay. because I'm helping community service. Yes. Okay, it's yes. a community yes. service, like yes. we have said. Okay, we thank God for that. Yes. The program is still feminine scope. The station is OGBC on ninety point five FM, and my guest is Mrs. Olufemilola Adewunke Oyefeso, a retired civil servant. She was a former director of publication of Gun State House of Assembly. Now, to every woman, there's always a man that has been supportive, maybe beside, maybe in front, maybe at the back, wherever. Who is the man in your life? The man in my life is 
barista Oluwashola Olaran Oju Oye Feso mm. We are both from Ode we are the of Ode Remo Both from you How did you miss? Yes. Don't tell me you met at the court with judicial No, 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 you were very well there when I met him Oh, oh, okay yes. We met at Ode Remo Okay I was just training with my late cousin Mrs. Solifun Lash I was training with her that day when I met with him and he followed us to the house I said Kilo <laughs> I joked. That was how we started the relationship. What year was that? That was nineteen eighty two. Mm. To the glory of God. You are how old in marriage now? Mm. I'm Wait. thirty-eight years in marriage. Wow. Yes. That's I got nice. married in nineteen eighty six. Okay. I gave back to my first child in nineteen eighty six. That yeah. was June second. Okay. We thank God. Yes. Anyway, I wish you honeymoon forever. Amen. I want you to advise this generation. Thank God you said you are now in the judiciary, you're looking at failures in marriage or marriage breakdowns and all that. What would be your advice with what you have seen on the field as a judicial member one? Advise this generation in that area especially, both male and female. I want to counsel ladies first. I want to be some kokowani. Hmm. That's my dialect. Have you yourself before uh -huh. you Make sure you can feed yourself before marriage. Okay. Don't go into marriage as a liability that uh, my husband will be fending for me. People should have something that they are doing. They should be working. As a lady, you should be working. You should not go into marriage without doing anything. It's not helping marriages. One of the things that allow people to live and work out of their marriages is because they are not doing anything. They are relying on the husband to do everything. And it's not possible in this age. Consider the economic of our nation. You two must be doing something. And there is no perfect individual. You must be ready to sacrifice your own marriage too. You must not wait that my husband will be doing everything. Because the cases we are having basically is on finance. Mm. Uh, they bought clothes. My friends bought clothes. He was unable to buy it. Mm. Then men should not be their wives. I took my marital out in Yoruba. A new market, 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 a new market. You should be able to know that certain things you have taken out about it. So you two should be clearing, you should allow your husband to be the head. You should submit, and God will help ladies to submit. Submission is a very delicate thing in marriage, and it's something that is very important. So ladies going to marriage you should be ready to submit to the husband. And you can't go to marriage without praying. Husband too, they should not be their wives. They are not slaves. They are there as a companion. They are there to help you out. So they should not be most of the people they are brutal. They are beating their wives mercilessly. Mm. Putting marks on the body. So that another man will not be able to cherish her again. Mm. It's not good. Man, they are accountable to God. We are all accountable to God. One day we go back to God and give account. This is how I spent my life. This is what I've done. So based on that, we should know what we do. Uh, the word of God says, uh, the whole duty of a man is to fear God and keep his commandments. Wherever we go, whatever we do in life, we should fear God and keep his commandments. And God will help us. The most uh, commandment of God is love your neighbor as yourself and love God with your heart. And God will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much. I love that angle that you came in uh, to advise. Now, let's take a look at the parents. Some will say uh, it begins from home. That maybe parenting, parents these days don't do proper parenting. God will help us. Amen. There is no proper parenting in most homes. Okay. So women will leave home very early and they will not come back on time. They will say they are going to look for money. What, what money are you looking for at the expense of your children? You should because use, that's economic power now. You just uh, said that. We must work. Okay. But then, we are keepers at home. Okay. We must make sure our home is in proper state before leaving for other employments. If you need to wake up early, you need to wake up early. Do that for the sacrifice of your marriage. And some women, they will not even cook good food for the children. Mm. Some will even give their children money, money. to mm. go and buy food that you don't know how it was prepared. It's not good enough. God will help us. For a woman, home first. Okay. Home your children first. first before anything. You should be caring. That does not mean you should not be responsible. You will still work, but you must take care of your home. Mm. Even if you are not in the paid employment, it pays you better. Then you can sit at home, sell some other things, or if you want to go to the market, make sure you are prepared your children for school. They are in the school on time, not getting late to the school. Home is important to God. 
work is important to God because we must make ends meet. Mm. God will help us in Amen. Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much. Um, do you party at all? Are you a party person? As in oh, social. Yeah, social. social. No, 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 no. Eh? You don't do party. I do social, but not, <laughs> not like that. I go to parties that I'm invited to. Thank you so much. Any type of music that you love so well? I love hymns. Hymns. Wow. Do you sing in church? No. You are not a member of the choir. I'm not a member of the choir. But, but I can But you sing. can sing. You I sing to praise God. Yes. But let's have your voice. Okay. Maybe I can back you. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a fortress of glory divine. Here's of salvation, precious of God. Born of the Spirit, watching His blood. This is my story. This is my song. Present my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Present my Savior. Oh, Daddy, long blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine, heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of his spirit. In his blood, this is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior. The day long, perfect submission, perfect delight, visions of rapture not burst on my sight. Angels descending, bring from above echoes of mercy. Whispers of love Submission, all is at rest. I in my Savior am happy and blessed, watching and waiting, looking above, filled with His goodness, lost in His love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. 
program. Thank you so much for finding time to be on this program today. We really appreciate you. Thank you, ma. Thank In you retirement, I wish you greater strength, Amen. multiple blessings, Amen. joy, peace, Amen. and love of God. Amen. It is well with you. Amen. Thank you so much, Thank ma. you, ma. Thank I you. I really appreciate you for inviting me. You too will retire Amen. with good health in Jesus' Amen. name. Amen. You will not retire to sickness. Amen. You will retire to well be good health. Amen. And God will prosper your life in Amen. Jesus' name. Amen. I really appreciate you. Thank you so much, ma. Thank you, ma. So this is how far we'll go on today's edition of Feminine Scope on OGBC. 90.5 FM. I thank my guest once again, Mrs. Olufomilola Adewunke Oyefeso, a retired civil servant. She is the former director of publication, Ogun State House of Assembly. I also thank my producer, Timila Tijani, assisted by Fumila Yakintoi. My studio manager is Adetokbe Adibong. My name is Tony Shogwe Sontiyes. Till next week, do enjoy your weekend. Good morning. <music>